Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're watching this on YouTube or Spotify or on social media, wherever, I'm really excited to deliver this presentation to you because I think, and I know it's going to be really beneficial to you because a lot of people are affected by this. And what I'm talking about is caffeine. And like all drugs, caffeine is a drug. Um, Sometimes we can lose control over it, the amount that we're consuming on a day-to-day -day basis, and it can start to limit the way that we function. We can become reliant upon it, and also everybody has different limitations with it. Everybody's going to react differently. Like anything, like food, sleep, stress, day-to-day -day activities, we all react differently and we all have different levels of able to function. And caffeine is a prime example of that. Um, some people can cope really well with caffeine. Some people just can't cope with it at, at all. Um, and at the moment with, you know, so many different ways to get hold of your caffeine in so many di different formats, i.e. there's so many different outlets out there with different kinds of coffee that you can get, different quantities of coffee, strengths, um, and also not just um, coffee drinks, there's tea, different kinds of tea, and also, you know, uh, energy drinks and, and fizzy drinks and all that that contain certain levels of caffeine. And as I said, before you know it, it's kind of dictating to us how we interact with the world, how we function on a day-to-day -day basis and can hold you back from being as uh, optimal as possible. So this is going to, this presentation is going to get you to be aware of that, bring your awareness to it because only we can only take action on things when we're aware of it and um, what to do, how to regain control so you're able to optimize your life. So here's something that I found quite uh, amazing and I only found this out the other week that 90% of the world's population consumes caffeine on a day-to-day -day basis and that is a vast amount of numbers of people on day-to-day. -day. There's billions of people day-to-day -day consuming caffeine on a day-to-day -day basis and the vast majority of those people are consuming high levels of caffeine that is getting to feel normal that allows them to feel like they are operating on a normal level um, so they're dependent on it uh, they feel if they were to take that caffeine away they wouldn't be able to function as they would like to and that's a high dependency on on a drug i.e caffeine and again they might be getting this through many different formats whether that's tea coffee energy drinks fizzy drinks also chocolate as well but there's only a smaller amount depending on the kind of chocolate that you are consuming so high numbers and heavily can be heavily out of control so consumption the fda has cited that 400 milligrams a day that's about four or five cups of coffee as a, an amount to generally be associated that isn't dangerous uh, and have any sort of like negative effects We've got to be aware that, you know, for some people, 400 milligrams, you know, around four to five cups of coffee is a lot for some people. That is a lot for me. Um, I'm probably better, nothing above 300, probably closer to 250. I feel all right. Um, you know, but some again, some people might feel absolutely five on, uh, fine on 400 milligrams or even more. So we've got to take it from person to person um, however there is a wide variety in how people react to this how sensitive people are to caffeine and you know how fast they uh, they metabolize it how how quickly they break it down and then that will have an uh, an effect on other aspects such as sleep quality do they get the jitters mood all sorts of things so um, I thought that was just just quite interesting, and and again with the four hundred milligrams, it's about being aware. So, are you aware of you know your normal, whatever that may be, drink? How much caffeine 
is kind of in that drink. You're never going to get exact, but start thinking about well, what changes can I make and how much caffeine am I actually consuming? And you get that number or the, the close as you can, and then you can start to make those changes. So what are the pros to caffeine? Because there are it's not just negatives, there are pros to this. So it can help you to stay focused. All right, we know this, so if we're at work, we're trying to get something done, having some caffeine can help us stay co- uh, focused. The feeling of being more physically ready to perform. So, you know, you might know people, you might be someone that has a, you know, a, an espresso or a, an Americana or something like that before they go and do um, some form of exercise. There's a whole fad out there now that, you know, generation of people that will head towards an energy drink of some sort before they train. All right, so it can be helpful in that regard. It can improve your mood. Uh, This is possibly down to the caffeine improving of your mood. One thing I didn't put on this list and I think we need to mention is, you know, it's a social thing now. It's the amount, if you think of the amount of conversations that are had uh, between two people on a day-to-day basis of a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, uh, in coffee shops, in homes, um, wherever it may be, uh, there's been some very empowering, very supportive conversations that have been had when people are consuming caffeine it brings people together. And over the years, there's been some very important conversations as well. So I think that's important to say as well. It's a very uh, supportive as social uh, conversation as well and, you know, gets people off their telephones as well. Increased dopamine receptors. So we'll go into this a little bit later and what that is and what that does and can support memory. So there has been trials and there's uh, um, tests out there that have shown that it can uh, support memory as well. So there are some, you know, positive things with caffeine if we are in a position of control over it. Now let's look at the negative aspects of caffeine. So caffeine binds uh, adenosine receptors, which in turn block the binding of adenosine to its receptors. So basically, what does adenosine do? Well, it helps you you to relax, calm down, drowsy, get tired. All right, that's basically what adenosine does. Gets into the receptors and gets you feeling tired. You know, you can get some sleep. What caffeine does is it blocks adenosine to those receptors. It fills the receptors so adenosine can't get in. Adenosine then doesn't go in anywhere. It stays in your brain, your system, and then builds and builds until the caffeine wears off and it's then able to get into the receptors. And that is when most people get this lull of energy, unfocused, can't concentrate, low energy. But what happens is then they head for another caffeinated Uh, drink and the whole kind of cycle returns again so they get more energy because they've caffeinated but adenosine starts to build in the system doesn't get into the receptors caffeine wears off adenosine gets in makes you drowsy makes you tired blah 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 and this is obviously when uh, caffeine levels are high and unmanageable so that's one of the big reasons and issues that we're facing here with high intake of caffeine then we've got the sleep quality will not be as good if we've got caffeine in the system. And one thing you've got to realize is, and this depends from person to person, caffeine can stay in the system for anything between 8 to 12 hours. So you might be thinking, oh, I've had a, my last caffe- caffeinated drink was you know, midday, you're going to bed at 9, 10 o'clock, whatever it may be. It won't be in the system. It may well be. And you also might be one of those people that think, well, I sleep well anyway on, on the coffee that I'm drinking the tea that and drink whatever it is but the quality of sleep probably isn't where it should be so you may be sleeping but the quality of sleep is is affected by the caffeine Uh, consuming caffeine to function normally your new baseline so your baseline is dictated on where how much caffeine you're currently consuming so if you consumed less you would feel that you wouldn't be functioning as normal <laughs> um, so that's you're reliant on that caffeine to be able to support your you to function also anxiety so many people find that anxiety rises when they uh, can uh, you know have too much caffeine um, and you can have this in the jitters you're going to get very jittery uh, can't focus anxiety raises so that's a negative and caffeine can be used to cope with daily stresses so if people are feeling stressed 
people are head for a caffeinated drink and uh, to try and cope with their stresses. Not necessarily doing anything about that stress that they are, are currently facing. So there's some of the negative um, things that we are facing with caffeine. So ways that we can start to manage caffeine better. First and foremost, it's like I've said before, it, it's your awareness. Now, 100 milliliters to 300 milliliters um, is where how much caffeine you can find in any range of uh, coffee particularly because obviously we know it's quite strong. Um, so depending on what kind of coffee you're having, uh, you can have anything between 100 milliliters and 300 milliliters. And, and you if you think back earlier on in the presentation, and we said the op, you know, the range that you don't want to be going over is three, uh, sorry, four hundred milliliters. You can see how quickly you can build up to four hundred milliliters if we got uh, caffeinated drinks on the market uh, and on the high street that are selling uh, drinks that have got that amount of caffeine in just one drink. Um, so the first thing you you can do is just start being aware. Look at your drink choice find out how much is in there and then if you want to then you can start making the relevant changes to that drink to uh, suit your lifestyle and how much many drinks you want across the day um, so that's the first thing we need to be we need to do is be be aware consume post 90 minutes after awakening so for a lot of people they're waking up they're grabbing a coffee a tea whatever it is and you're blocking those receptors again as we said earlier and therefore that whole roller coaster is starting from a very early stage. What we want to be doing in the, in the mornings is getting our awakened receptors, those chemicals going around our body that are driving us to be awake and supportive of that. So we want to be getting hydrated. We want want to get you know uh, natural light into our eyes. We want to be moving, whether that's a brisk walk, some yoga, whether that is doing some exercise if that suits. Um, but the last thing we want to do is be shutting those re receptors down again with caffeine because you, that, that roller coaster is going to last for the rest of the day. OK, this is also putting that caffeine off is also going to be supporting your energy to be more consistent and your focus to be more consistent. Get caffeine from a quality source. So, again, because we've got so many options, we can quite easily get poor quality these Poor quality caffeinated drinks going to have uh, many other chemicals in, uh, stimulants in, as well as the caffeine. And who knows, you know, how much that you're consuming on a day-to-day -day basis and the uh, negative uh, side effects that that's, they are going to have on your general health moving forwards. So always look at a good, better quality. I love my Italian coffee. Uh, Lavazza is my choice of uh, coffee brand. Um, you know, the, the, in terms of what's in it, it's, it's basically coffee. Uh, there's bits of other bits in there as well, obviously. But going towards more of a quality-based um, uh, source of, of caffeine is, is really going to be helpful as well. And caffeine can stay in your system for up to 12 hours. And depending on the person, 8 to 12 hours, depending on how quickly you can break it down. And again, as I've said, keep this in mind when you're thinking about sleep quality. So I know that, you know, for most days I'm done with drinking any caffeine by two o'clock. Sometimes it's 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 one o'clock and then I'm done. If I'm training later in the day and I've not done a morning uh, session, then yes, it might be a little bit later, 3, 3 p.m. at the latest. But I know for me, if I drink later than that, then that's going to have a knock-on effect on my sleep quality. So trying to take bring the, that caffeine intake into right in the middle of the day, putting it off at least 90 minutes after uh, waking up, and then try and stop drinking caffeine um, beyond two, 1, 2 p.m. if you can. So really it's about finding your range, being aware of how you react to your caffeine, that awareness, uh, any adverse uh, reactions that you may be having you know you may feel good on three cups of coffee you have that fourth you get jittery you know energies here there can't focus so really kind of finding your range and seeing what really suits best for you because everyone as I said is different 
So ca uh, uh, caffeine consumption awareness. Caffeine is also being consumed via energy drinks, as I've suggested, and other fizzy drinks. Now, this is a shocking one. Some of the larger, some of the well-named, branded energy drinks can have anything between 200 milliliters to 800 milliliters um, of caffeine, as well as other chemicals, i.e., I'm going to say this wrong, theanine, uh, which can support sleep. So basically what they're doing here, guys, is they're whacking a load of um, caffeine into these drinks. But because they most likely, you know, you won't feel great after consuming all that caffeine, they will put something like theanine in which supports sleep. So you're less likely to get the jitters um, and you're more likely to want another one. Um, so they're, they're putting, this is how they're doing it. They're putting other chemicals in to get you to uh, consume more. Um, by the time you want to come to sleep, your body is completely out of whack and can't get to sleep and will not get the quality sleep that you want to get. All right. OK. So let's look at how to regain control over this consumption and almost kind of reset and find your new baseline so we want to be doing this over a five to seven day period where you're going to start some tapering so over the first um couple of days you want to be start to cut this down by anything with 10 to 15 percent per day so let's say over the first three days just tapering it down day to day of 10 to 15 percent per day now this might be over the volume of uh, within each drink of caffeine that you have in so a little bit less caffeine um in there um or a bit more concentrated uh with a bit more water or something like that but just start very slowly bringing it down and then in the next three to four days half the intake um so you can do this again with the volume so you might be less caffeine per drink a smaller drink um, and you might also start to bring in some decaffeinated drinks in as well. Um, so let's say you usually having five cups. Now you're having, let's say, two and a half cups. Now, um, you know, one of them, uh, an extra one might be a decaffeinated drink. So start bringing it down slowly over the next, that three to four days. Then what you want to do after that, you want to then have a complete day off. And because you've tapered it down the first two, three days, you started cutting it down by 10 to 15 percent. And then after that, next three to four days, you've uh, halved your intake. It's not going to be so bad for you to have that day off. What I would do on this day off is really support your body and your brain. Uh, so hydration is going to be key. Daily light reading less screen time if if you can wherever possible um and eat well you know the normal stuff loads of vegetables and fruit eat the rainbow basically and just eating very well to something that's going to support uh general energy across the day then the day after back to 50 percent of your daily dose before the lowering phase so you're going back after after you know where you were prior uh, to the tapering but obviously 50 percent see how you feel from that um, and then what most people will do is after six months or so 12 months they'll find that their caffeine intake has increased again um, and then you can go back to this tapering uh, over five seven days bringing it down slowly 10 15 percent over the first couple of days then halving it for the next three to four days day off and then back to 50 percent where you were uh, before the tapering phase started and that's going to be a really nice way to reset and just regain control so you're able to dictate the amount of caffeine that you're consuming uh, and make your own choices instead of it the other way around um, and you've just created a new baseline basically for yourself okay so find your personal preference and this is what i'm going to leave you with here now guys find the place where you feel control uh what your intake level is 90 minutes after waking from sleep is really uh where you want to then start being able to consume caffeine at least 8 to 12 hours before bed depending on the individual and don't allow it to become something you rely on for focus and energy if we're looking at focus and energy we're looking at movement daylight nutrition hydration and obviously sleep 
All right, if you're struggling to focus, you want to be going to do to and addressing those things first before trying to paper over the cracks with caffeine and taper off uh, if it's gone up too much in, in terms of your consumption. Don't try and go cold turkey because this is where people can suffer with um, headaches. They can suffer with migraines, um, not feeling great at all, almost feeling like that they're ill um so take the tapering off approach is going to be a lot more supportive for you so guys i hope that has been helpful for you in terms of your caffeine intake regaining control optimizing your life and 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 being able to perform and function at the level that you want to perform and turn up for for everybody in your life as, as well as yourself so 